Lord, we are here today to hear your word. We want to hear you, Lord. Anoint each and every one of us with the Holy Spirit so that we are able to understand your words of truth. Fill each and every one of us with your spirit of wisdom and understanding. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's message comes from Psalms chapter 98, but let me read 99 first. Um, it is related to today's main message. The Lord reigneth, let the people tremble, he sitteth between the cherubims, let the earth be moved. The Lord is great in Zion, and he is high above all the people. Let them praise thy great and terrible name, for it is holy. The king's strength also loveth judgment. Thou dost establish equity. Thou executest judgment and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt ye the Lord our God, and worship at his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel, among them that call upon his name, they called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spake unto them in the cloudy pillar, they kept his testimonies, and the ordinance that he gave them. Thou answerest them, O Lord our God, thou wast a God that forgavest them, though thou tookest vengeance of their inventions. Exalt the Lord our God, and worship at his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. Amen. Okay, so back to Psalm 98. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. The Lord hath made known his salvation, his righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. He hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice, and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of psalm. With trumpets and sound of cornet, make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills be joyful together before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity. Amen. The psalmist preaches the words of prophecy in the Holy Spirit, previewing the scene that all things on the earth, rejoicing and singing in the presence of God who is coming to judge the earth in the future. He is shouting for singing a new psalm before the Lord God, who comes to judge the earth. For that reason, it is said that God has won victory with his arms. It is also said that God has triumphed because he has let known to all the earth about his salvation in the last 6,000 years. He also informed all the nations of God's righteousness reminded them of mercy and truth about Israel, and testifies that all the ends of the earth saw God's salvation. God is telling the earth to rejoice and sing loudly, which has been cursed by the sin of the first man, and has made thorns and thistles for the last 6,000 years. He also commands the sea to roar, and the fullness thereof, also to the world and everything in it. He even commands the waves to clap and the mountains to rejoice together. 
unto all the inhabitants of the earth, he is telling them to sing joyfully before the Lord God, who comes to judge the world. This is because God comes to judge, judge by his righteousness, and because for his chosen Israelites, he also judges with equity. Of all creatures living on the earth, only humankind have sinned before God. God made man from dust, but when he sinned, all the innocent soil on the earth got cursed, and has been filled with thorns and thistles since. For the last 6,000 years, God has appealed to the conscience of man, and wants them to live according to their consciences. But he had judged all people besides Noah and his family by seeing that the imagination of the thoughts of all hearts were evil. You can read about it in Genesis 6 through 7. Later, he gave his chosen Israel the law, but except for a small number of people, all sinned, leaving God rather to worship idols. He sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to shed blood, to die, and to resurrect for the remission of sins for them all in the world. But except for the remnant, the Jews, Gentiles, and most people still do not believe in him. God will send forth the great tribulation to the world in order to give the Jews and the Gentiles the final chance of salvation. But they are not going to repent at all. But just a small number of the Jews and Gentiles shall be saved through the fervent trial as testified by Apostle John. God declared that he would judge the world in Revelation chapter 11 verse 18 and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come in the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets and the saints and them that fear thy name small and great and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth God will judge those who have destroyed the earth according to their greed without repentance before him. They contaminated God's given fresh air as well as all lands and seas, even contaminated all creatures including all the innocent beasts, fowls, and fishes of the sea for them to live in pain. Apostle Paul testified of the scene in which all creation suffers because of man's sin. In Romans chapter 8, verses 19 through 23, he said, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifest manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even, our, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. That's right. Only God's children that are the brides of Christ, who have been forgiven of all their sins through repentance and the bloodshedding of Jesus Christ, are waiting for God's judgment day for rejoicing and singing on that very day. 
Those who do not believe in the remission of sins through the blood shedding of Jesus Christ shall be judged by shedding their own blood according to God's law of justice. Jesus, who appeared in the form of Adam, died and resurrected the third day as Adam to have his bride to be united in the church of God. At the end of the great tribulation, he will make the church of God his wife through the marriage of the Lamb. He will immediately open the heaven and come down to the earth to judge the world with his bride, that is the church of God, and establish his kingdom. Seeing this scene in the Holy Spirit, Apostle John testified in Revelation chapter 19 verses 11 through 13. And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his, on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with the vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Apostle John also testified of Christ's brides descending to earth with him in the next verse. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. He continued to testify of the judgment of the world in the battle of Armageddon, in the next two verses, 15 and 16, he said, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture, on his thigh, a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Prophet Isaiah also testified that in the future Christ appears to judge the world, staining his garments red with the blood of those who do not believe in him. He spoke of this in Isaiah 63 verses 1 through 4. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment, for the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the ear of my redeem is done, is come. Prophet Zechariah also foresaw and witnessed the battle of Armageddon and the millennial kingdom of Christ. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the mountain of olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. Zechariah chapter 13, verses 3, 4, and 9. Jesus Christ has his own righteous reason to judge the world. He decided to pardon the sins of all people of the world. He came in the likeness of sinner and took on all kinds of sufferings, 
insults, and shed all the blood of God, and died to redeem all the sins of all the people of the world. It is righteous for God to judge them by having their own blood shed, for they did not believe the blood of Christ. He has been waiting for the last 2,000 years as if it was just two days. Those who are saved and became brides of Christ shall come down with him on judgment day to help as judgments and sing new songs with all creation. In addition, in the millennial kingdom establishing on the earth, they shall be a helping spouse to rule the earth together. In the eternal world, they shall also be blessed to help his work that fills all things in the universe forever and ever. One last note about Great Tribulation. Uh, Matthew twenty four twenty one, Jesus spoke about it to his disciples. He said, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be meaning there was nothing ever like this or ever will be you might be asking yourself who's this for this is for the non-believers this is judgment day on earth if you have been saved saved christian you're not going through this so you don't have to worry about this this is why in the age of grace which is today you have to be saved so don't be a fool and wait till the last minute and then regret missing the salvation train get saved now okay amen and hallelujah